Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Since uh, Dr. Shumsky said that was her favorite song, I thought I would play that one. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Steve Knox, I'm your host, and right now we're going to the phone to say hello to my next. This is Attorney Matthew Valentinus. He is one of the, uh, I think, one of the producers of a movie called An Open Secret, which is a uh, devastating look at the sexual exploitation of teenage boys in the entertainment industry by older men and who can make or break their careers. Uh, Mr. Valentinus, welcome to Talk of the Town. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to get some more exposure for you here on this film. I think this is absolutely an amazing film, and it's certainly something that I wish more people would actually seek out because it tells just a, a, a truly devastating story about what is not a new part of Hollywood but just seems to continue, and no one no one cares. Everyone seems to look the other way. They don't care about the actual victims here. Yes, and if people want to see it, uh, we've placed it free on Vimeo. Uh, it's just an open secret on Vimeo, so anyone can watch it for free anytime they want. Uh, we've had, since we've placed it free on Vimeo, we've had over 5 million people watch it. Um, and it's also, you can find it on our Twitter link. Our Twitter is at an open secret, and there's a link to the movie right there. Um, and we've been sort of getting this information out. We started this journey back in 2011. So it's been a, it's been a long haul, but we're committed to it and we're finally starting to see progress ever so slowly. And I think people are seeing more and more every day how prevalent, uh, sexual abuse and pedophilia and sexual abuse of, of children and minors is not only in Hollywood, but everywhere. And that was one of the main reasons that we did this, because we wanted to show it how it works in Hollywood, because Hollywood is such an exaggerated example of how this happens everywhere, because people just have more money and more influence to throw around, and people are more desperate to get into the industry. And we knew that if we could show some famous people that are doing this, it would be easier to spot the the coach down the hall or the teacher down the street or you know, the local pedophile, because everyone listening to this right now, there's probably a sexual offender within three to five miles of their house. And that's the point we're trying to make is that this is, I know uh, President Trump declared a national emergency today, but we think sexual abuse of children is actually probably the greatest national emergency in our country. And it affects so many people that it really needs to be addressed and taken out of it you know, it, it needs to be spoken about publicly, and that was one of the main reasons why we did this film. Yeah, and I, I don't remember exactly how it's worded at the end of the movie, but I remember it was also in the beginning of the film before it even started where it talks about, you know, be, be brave, be strong, you know, we're here if you need us. You know, you can – I should have written it down, but it, it, it tells this story in such a, a non-exploitative, non-hysterical way. It actually just kind of walks you through – how this happens and the story of, of of martin weiss for example i mean that more than anything else is probably one of the most horrific stories because everyone thought this guy was a good guy everybody thought he was a nice person everybody thought he was like he was a, he was welcome into this family as he was being the, working as an agent for this this one child uh evan and my god he was a monster Yes, and unfortunately, Hollywood is the perfect breeding ground for pedophiles. And what we sort of start in that documentary is we show you how the industry allows these pedophiles to find positions of authority, whether it's as dialogue coaches, acting coaches, studio teachers, stuntmen, whatever. They're always just hangers-on, talent agents, managers. Uh, they're always around, and and. They all know each other. And what we've discovered is that this is a very highly organized network of pedophiles in Hollywood who've been operating for decades. And they are connected to some very famous, well-known people, famous directors, famous actors, famous producers, powerful agents. And they really have been operating freely for, for, for decades. And, We've gotten even more information since this documentary came out in, it was officially released in 2014, 2015. We had a documentary release in 2014 at a festival. And 
now we've discovered almost like an organized criminal network of pedophiles. We, we played a big role in, in providing a lot of information to the recent Atlantic article that came out about two or three weeks ago, which we thought was going to hit with a much bigger bang. But again, it doesn't because Hollywood is silencing this issue. Hollywood likes to go after everything else. But when it comes to looking in their own backyard and dealing with their own problems, no one wants to address this. Just last week or a couple weeks ago, you saw in the news today is that Jesse Smollett uh, thing that happened in Chicago where the actor from Empire said he was attacked and, and for being gay and for being black. And then everyone in Hollywood jumped on that. And now it's looking like that might actually be a hoax. But when we come out, when that Atlantic story came out, explaining how someone like Brian Singer had molested many kids on sets. No one in Hollywood has really spoken up about it. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's very de depressing. And we knew going into this when we made the film that it was going to be dark and that we were going to go up against some powerful people. But one of our main strategies was once Hollywood figures sees how bad this is, of course they're going to want to support us and do something about it. They're going to want to do what ended up being like a Me Too movement. That was our goal. We figured Hollywood would say, right, we've no got to stop. Yeah, we got to stop the abuse of kids, but they never did. But then when it became about women, they jumped on board of that. See, this is so bad and it's so real in Hollywood that they're trying to cover it up because this is going to cost them billions and billions of dollars. And the prime example is with Brian Singer. We feel we played a very big role in him losing his job on Bohemian Rhapsody. We feel like we played a very big role in him not being able to direct this next film, Red Sonja, which was going to be an $80 million film. Um, and studios are finally starting to stay away from people. You're seeing studios cut R. Kelly. Even Ryan Adams, the, the rock and roll guy, just lost his, his, his deal yesterday for sexual abuse. The Ryan Kelly, uh, I mean, the uh, R. Kelly documentary on Lifetime series for a couple of days was very big, and that started to draw a lot of attention. So we were at the very beginning of this, and no one was really supporting the film. But yet we had, it was a, a high-quality film, Amy Berg was our director. She's Oscar nominated. She had multiple films before this, one of them called Deliver Us From Evil, where she exposed a Catholic priest sexual scandal, which is why one of the reasons we hired her for this. And she's had several other films on. She's had Janis Joplin. She's had Prophets of Prey about the LCS uh, sexual abuse scandal. And she's doing the Adnan, Adnan Syed piece for HBO right now. So all those networks wouldn't take this film, even though it was a high-quality film. We had great insurance. We had an Oscar-nominated director. It was fully legally vetted. No one was going to be sued. Uh, Showtime was telling us they loved it. And then it went to a private screening with Les Moonves at CBS. Who killed it? Um, and that, that, to me, is, is, is the most infuriating part of this whole story because you mentioned brian singer a couple of times and i know when i first reached out to you guys he said you know we got this article coming out in esquire magazine uh let's talk after that and i went okay and, and i still followed what you did on twitter and social media and everything else and then uh it never came out it never came out it never came out and then i saw that it came out in the atlantic and i thought wow they told me it was going to be in the in esquire and yet it turns out that brian singer and many other more powerful people in hollywood actually killed the story in esquire magazine and esquire went along with that Exactly. And, and if you watch our film, our film sort of was built around the same thing, because our film centers on something that's called the Digital Entertainment Network, which was like an early Netflix. OK, and it was run by a convicted pedophile and several other pedophiles that were his, his friends. And it was almost like a front for a pedophile operation. And uh, this guy named John Connolly who participated in our film, wrote uh, a very in-depth piece about this digital entertainment network because he was hearing about how much money they were raising and how horrible the films they were making and nothing was really getting done. And he, he's hearing about these kids at these parties with grown men. And Details Magazine was going to run a big piece. And they, you know, they fact-checked it. They paid him a lot. And then one day somebody, he got a call from like a, very junior executive just saying it was killed. Same exact thing. So somebody has been going around trying to kill this information for decades because we believe there are people 
even, you know, Brian Singer was the most highly paid director in 2017. It's probably this Bohemian Rhapsody is the most successful uh, biopic ever. Okay. And we believe that there are people bigger and more prominent and more powerful than Brian Singer that are involved in these types of things. And if this information comes out, it's going to kill the industry. Well, of course, because, you know, continuing to focus on Brian Singer, you look back on his very first movie that he made, Apt Pupil. He brought in a bunch of young uh, kids from the local high school and told their and told their parents, don't worry about it, we'll protect them, we'll protect them. But then you find out what was going on behind the scenes. And if you read the Atlantic article, I mean, that's just absolutely amazing. There's people on set allowing this to happen with this director. I don't even want to use the word I'm thinking of. And no one does anything about it. No one cares. And, and, and you know, the lawsuits come, and they're all wiped away, and all this stuff just swept under the carpet. And he's allowed to then continue on and make a usual, the usual suspects and make the X-Men movies. And everybody knows this is happening. Everybody knows what they're dealing with with this guy. It's, as you say, an open secret, and yet nobody cares. And what we're trying to say is that there are other people just as prominent as him, just as influential as him, in charge of, of franchises, children's shows, it's out there. Uh, like Disney Channel, you, you, you document some people who work for Nickelodeon, people who still work for Nickelodeon, and they just, have a record. Just yesterday, Nickelodeon is bringing back a show called All That, which was one of their you know biggest children's shows, I think, started in 1994. It was created by a guy named Dan Schneider who was fired last year by Nickelodeon uh, for being, you know, rumored abuse, okay? And there's a lot of – Brian Singh uh, – what you call it? Dan Schneider ran a comedy camp for years with a convicted pedophile named Brian Peck, who we also show in our movie is best – very good friends with Brian Singer. Brian Peck – is actually on the DVD commentary of the first X-Men with Brian Singer. And they're going over a scene where uh, Brian Peck is the hot dog guy. In the background is Stan Lee, the guy who created X-Men. And then in the background walking next to Stan Lee is another pedophile named Gary Goddard, who is also friends with Brian Peck and Brian Singer. So Brian Singer happens to be surrounded by all these convicted pedophiles, but he's saying that he's not one. And my connection to Brian Peck and Dan Schneider having these talent camps for young children, there's an article in the LA Times from 2002. It's called Groomed to Be All That. And it talks about Schneider and Peck running this camp. And Schneider at the time is probably the most influential guy in children's television. There are 35,000 kids registered with the Screen Actors Guild. They all want to get on shows like the ones that Dan Schneider produces. So you think about it. You have a convicted pedophile teaching a comedy camp for kids that are trying to break into Disney and Nickelodeon shows, and no one's doing anything about it. And Brian Peck is still working in the industry today. And so last year, Nickelodeon fires Dan Schneider, but just today, they bring back his show. And they bring it back. It's being run. The guy who took over the network happens to be one of Dan Schneider's best friends who starred his name's Brian Robbins. And he starred with Dan Schneider back in the head of the class TV show from the eighties. So it's really just a circle and they just kind of move some chairs around, but nothing's really being done to address the issue because they're still making so much money on all of this. And it's, that is absolutely the most disgusting part of all of this. And just a few weeks ago uh, on your Twitter account, An Open Secret, you, you put out a, a short list of people who are still working or up until who may or may not still be working in Hollywood, uh, one of them being Kevin Spacey, but Brian Singer, Gus Van Sant, Roman Polanski, Victor Salva, Gary Goddard, Jeffrey Jones, Shane Spar, all these people working in Hollywood, and Kevin Spacey, who I think may be done, perhaps, but... They're all still working. They're all walking the streets, and they're all – they've all sexually abused children. Yeah, and, and the industry just stays silent on it. Like, for finally, just this week in an, in an English – I think it was an English paper – did an interview with Patrick Stewart, 
who's been very good friends with Brian Singer for a very long time. He's been in a lot of his X-Men movies. They work together on a lot of projects. And, you know, Patrick Stewart's finally saying something like, oh, it's just, you know, it's, it's horrible what's, what's happened if, you know, if, if this is true. And it's just, it's bizarre that people like Hugh Jackman don't speak up. Uh, people like Patrick Stewart, people like Jennifer Lawrence, you know, all these people that have starred in this films uh, don't say a word. They never saw anything on set. They never saw any rumors. It's ridiculous. And then Rami Malek, who's probably going to win the Oscar this year uh, for Bohemian Rhapsody, he said, oh, when I took the role, I had no idea about Brian Singer. You know, I just kept my head down and I was just preparing for the role. I find that very disingenuous. I find it almost... Yeah, the guitarist for Queen uh, who got this project going. Brian May. He finally, yeah, he, Brian May finally had to uh, walk back all of his praise and support for Brian Singer as this evidence started coming out. I mean, these people will literally get in bed with a with a pedophile if it makes them money or gets them a little Oscar, and and that's just that's just where their head is at. And no one will draw attention to the fact that like, hey, I don't want to work with this guy. This guy is a sick person. And um, he also, it also looks at the whole studio system. You know, a lot of people I've spoken to in the studio system, they know about all this. So, and, and a lot of times these projects, they affect so many people. There's, you know, three to 5,000 people that might be involved in a major film. It's a small corporation. I get it. You don't want to kill a project because of one person. But some, somewhere, sometimes, some executive has to say, Enough's enough. We can't be working with this type of people. This is where we have to draw the line. And I think there's going to be a lot of suits coming out um, that are going to start affecting who they hire, wh who they work with, because they think they're okay right now, because they think, oh, statute of limitations, a lot of this is in the past, and they're, they're hiding behind NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. But a lot of those are not effective if they're covering up criminal acts of sexual abuse. And we know of other non-disclosure agreements that are out there uh, that have been signed, that people have been paid off, that you know are, are very likely to come forward. It could take five years, it could take 10 years, it could, it could take two months. But until the industry is really ready, to, the industry needs to get in front of this, but they keep trying to cover it up and they only make it worse. And you know, what, 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 it occurred to me what's really interesting about this. You say this has been going on for the past couple of decades, but if you look back even further than that, Mario Puzo wrote The Godfather, and if you read The Godfather or saw the unedited version, the original, the full cut that was uh, uh, released a few years ago, there's a scene in there where this director has a young girl of maybe what 10, 12 years old living in his house. He's sleeping with her, and the mother is standing right there saying, no, honey, you know what you've got to do if you want to be a star. And it's like that's another aspect of this. You didn't focus a lot of that on your movie, but there is that aspect as well where parents are almost willing to, to pimp out their kids if it gets them that opportunity. Well, and the reason we didn't want to go back to the old information is because we wanted to show how it's actually still happening because then people would be able to say, oh, that used to happen. That can't possibly happen anymore. But I would, but I would recommend people look at – you know, Shirley Temple did a great interview with uh, Larry King, I think, in the in the 90s or late 80s. And she's talking about how when she's three or four years old, she's walking into the office, the office next to Louis B. Mayer's office. And Louis B. Mayer's trying to sexually assault her mother. And the number two guy has his pants down when she when uh, Shirley Temple walks in as a three year old girl. OK, and this is I know where those offices are. I used to work at, at, at Columbia Pictures and that used to be the old MGM building. And and they just they, they walk in there, you know, a three year old girl. And this is a number two in charge of, of a studio. So there was a lot of that going on. Yeah, is your film ever going to be on something like say Amazon Prime or Netflix? Well, it could be tomorrow. It's I keep pushing my partner, Gabe Hoffman. He's the main financier of all of this. So he's the one that makes that decision. I think it w I think it would be great to get it up there. It'll probably cost us like another 10,000 or so, so or 15,000 to sort of get it up on an aggregator and I think more people will see it. But right now he's fine with having it on Vimeo and I don't know if he's ever going to change his mind. That's really his call. He's the sole owner. Uh but we we 
We also have more interviews that we're ready to release. And again, I'm just waiting on Gabe to finalize the edits because I went up to Toronto and shot the interviews with one of Brian Singer's boyfriends. And in these interviews, we detail a lot of names and a lot of how the operation works from the ground level all the way up to the top, like guys who literally pull kids off streets in LA, bring them to rape rooms, like apartments that they use as rape rooms in Hollywood, and then sort of bring them into the industry and then get them addicted to drugs, get them agents, start getting them jobs, pass them around to their friends. And then oftentimes that's it. These kids go away, they disappear, they go home, or they die of drug overdoses. Well, and again, this movie, An Open Secret, I, I cannot recommend it strong enough. It's on Vimeo. You have to have a, a web connection to watch it. And, and again, it's An Open Secret. It's, it's infuriating. It's devastating. I, there were points where I was in tears. The story of Mark Ryan, absolutely heartbreaking. Just heartbreaking that victims, these victims, who are just being tossed aside by these people in Hollywood and the people, like you say, the powerful people in Hollywood who know this is going on, but because they're making a ton of money, they're either they're looking the other way or they're actually engaging it in, in, the, in it themselves. Some of them are too. Some of and them are. In, 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 this war, in this time of Me Too and the Harvey Weinsteins and all this other stuff going on, for this to still be continuing and for people to just ignore it, is 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 disgusting, and I'm so glad I was able to get you on the air to talk about this. And I can't cannot. I wish you continued success and support, and hope you keep moving forward and pushing this. Well, thank you for your support, and thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk about it. Matthew, have a great afternoon. And again, the, the movie is called An Open Secret, and you can find it on Vimeo. And uh, hopefully, we can get you back when you have these uh, the new new interviews out. All right, great. Thanks again. Take care, sir. Bye. Uh, I just I. I